Regardless, if you celebrate uh, yesterday's events, I really hope you guys enjoyed your day and spent time with your family because at the end of the day, that's one of the most important things in this world. I'm not going to get all lovey-dovey, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to talk about some strategies, some bad strategies in this card game with tons of potential. So I am the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then make sure you destroy that subscribe button. But also, be sure to hit that notification bell because, well, we just too strong. So without further ado, I present to you the bad decks with tons, and I mean tons, of potential. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the new people to this series, I'm actually going to be talking about quite a few decks, and I'm going to be breaking down these decks into particular categories. All of these decks are bad, but they have tons of potential. I'm going to talk about why these decks have tons of potential in the specific meta, and then possibly talk about some new cards that can be introduced for said strategy to make it better. Starting off with the very first strategy, we're going to talk about Necroz. Now, Necroz was once the best ritual deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Necros of Trishula is the strong point of the strategy, being able to banish a card from your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard, taking away resources. The problem with Necros as a strategy is that it has a going second feel, but doesn't have going second breaking board opportunities. While Necros of Trishula is a very strong card, it doesn't necessarily do anything when your opponent puts multiple negations or disruptions. A good solution to Necros would be introducing a better going first cards for the strategy to be able to give it some umph, actually have some board presence, or just make the entire deck better hand traps. That can all be done, or you can bring Necros a Unicorn to three, and that would probably just solve all the problems with Necros. I still would be on the lookout for Necros. It is a very powerful strategy that has only received two prints in dual power and its original set, and these cards can always skyrocket in price. So back in about 2014, uh, I used to go to a shop called Game World, and there was this one player that hated, and I mean completely hated this strategy. His name was Dragon Master, and this particular strategy completely shut him down. And the strategy was known as Gravekeepers. Gravekeepers are a slow pace, flip effect based deck, normally sent around Gravekeeper Spy to spell summon Gravekeeper's Recruiter, and then Gravekeeper's Descendant to get rid of that Gravekeeper's Recruiter, blowing up your opponent's resources, and then gaining you on your turn. It is a trap based deck, so we know it's a great going first deck, but it struggles in the going second department. The mainstay of the deck is Necro Valley. Whether you're playing Gravekeeper cards or not, this card prevents players from touching the graveyard like Michael Jackson can't. He never did that, did he? I'm pretty sure he never did that. This card prevents players from touching the graveyard like Robert Kelly has touched all of those little girls. Now, that is confirmed. He is convicted, and this is no longer a children's channel. I can say that. Thank you, FTC. Gravekeepers are extremely strong. I think being able to get the fusion monster out as fast as possible would be the go-to thing. So possibly providing a link monster that would be able to take advantage of Gravekeeper cards or even being able to flip your Gravekeeper spy upon it being set on the turn. Regardless, Necro Valley is a very powerful card this format and will find its way into player's side or main decks because it can shut down some of the top contenders. Cleeford is the very first competitive pendulum deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Now it isn't like the pendulum deck you guys know today. Being able to summon those multiple negates on your opponent's side of the field or on your side of the field where you can eat glue as your opponent will struggle to break your board. Cleeford is a little bit different ladies and gentlemen. This deck was actually an anti-meta stun deck that played fairly decent. It was an ad OTK ability because of the pendulum cards. It was just really, really fun to play. Never really fun to play against. What would solve this Cleeford problem? Well, the strategy is decent, but I think we would just be in need of a new Cleeford monster. Seeing that we now have Cleeford Scout to three, and we have our Cleeford Spell card to three, and the deck just is not making waves. New Cleeford monsters would definitely breathe some life into the strategy, possibly even some Cleeford Links, not Cleeford Genius, because that card's good, but it's, it's kind of awkward. Regardless, I think going the Apocalyphort Towers is a terrible route in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Giving us a new boss monster or a new Cleeford monster that requires, or that gains effects when tributed 
it would be too strong. Ultimately, I do think that the deck is still good right now, just missing a couple of pieces to be very viable. Speaking of Cleefort, Monarch is actually in the exact same situation. Hypothetically, if you solve this Monarch problem, you actually solve the Cleefort problem because Cleeforts are actually Monarch-like cards. Monarch is a deck that is age old. It's been around Yu-Gi-Oh! since around 2004, and it's based on tributing your monsters to gain even stronger monsters to disrupt your opponent, giving you advantage upon every single Monarch summon. The deck can be extremely deadly. The structure deck has solved the Rubik's Cube of needing specific monsters on your side of the field to tribute and also gain advantage but what the strategy really needs is Pantheism the Monarch back to three. Now again, Pantheism the Monarch to three probably would open Pandora's box. I probably think Cleefort is a better Monarch version, but let's just face it, Aether into Karazo in your opponent's turn is still a deadly combination to disrupt your opponent, and Monarchs are one of the very few decks that don't need an extra deck to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, I know you guys are Monarch enthusiasts, so you're just gonna go ahead and post down below in the comment section anyways. I could have said Monarchs didn't need anything and they were the best deck ever and you guys would still post down below because you're Monarch fanboys. Regardless, I do think Monarchs are still a ways away. I'm not 100% sure what would be a solvent to their problem, so I want you guys to post down below in the comment section what can we actually do to solve the Monarchs problem. They have some of the most powerful cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. And I think even with Pantheism, they're not being utilized, so let me know, guys. If I already didn't have enough glue eaters watching this channel, really, really loving the content that I put out, I have to talk about a strategy that just about either everyone loves or hates. I'm serious, this strategy is like the Cowboys. Either you love them or you hate them. Fuck the Cowboys. The next strategy is Blackwing, and I'm pretty sure I just lost like half of my subscriber base by saying that, but oh well, sometimes you win some and lose some. Please come back. I, I didn't mean what I said. Blackwing is heavily predicated on Black Whirlwind, being able to gain normal summons to search your critical Blackwing cards. The real problem with Blackwing isn't necessarily Black Whirlwind or that its archetype is outdated, is that there's too many trash Blackwings, like seriously, like Cowboys players. Why is Amari Cooper? For like a star receiver like I don't understand how he beat Michael Thomas in Pro Bowl voting anyways moving away from cowboy banter you guys know I love them boys <laughs> Anyways, moving on back to Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys already know I love the boys, sending you guys mixed signals like that girl that you've been DMing for like a year and a half. Trust me, your friend zone, bro. They have an invincible monster in Blackwing Full Armor Master that is unaffected by card effects, and just like what I'm doing when I get into your girlfriend's DMs or the girl that you're pursuing DMs, I take your bitch. That card alone should be the pinnacle of Yu-Gi-Oh right now, especially since monster effects are at their prime, and getting rid of opponent's monsters are really hard to do. I think that Black Wings just need a Link Monster. If the Link Monster provided, I don't know, maybe an additional effect summon so you can get four normal summons in one turn, or maybe just another Black Whirlwind-like spell card, that's really all Black Wings need to be a very competitive deck. It's pretty much there. Pick up your Black Whirlwinds in Super and Ultra Rare before it is too late, because this strategy will always receive support. And just like the Cowboys, they will always have fans. You guys win. You're America's favorite team. We do a strategy in the Black Wing era. This was actually one of my favorite strategies of all time. I think some of the older players can agree with me when I say this has possibly some of the best art in Yu-Gi-Oh! Light Sworn are like it's like a tale of a deck that looks really, really, really good but fails on paper. It's literally like my life. I look really good, but I fell in life. Light Sworn has been around since around 2008 and has never lived up to the hype, having one of the strongest boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! history at the cost of a thousand life points. You can destroy all cards on the field, and it's been unrestricted for quite some time. Light Sworns have not been able to consistently crack any top bracket ever, like even during their format. The unfortunate thing about Light Sworn is the mill factor, the randomness to it, but Burning Abyss seems to do that just a little better. So my suggestion to Light Sworn is actually give the deck another normal summon. You guys thought that I would say that a Light Sworn deck would need monster effects to activate on the main phase? No, the deck just needs another normal summon. You have Minerva, which is still arguably one of the best Light Sworn cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Its effect is phenomenal and it is no longer an $800 card. This card can be the pivot card to bring Light Sworn back in a better relevancy. Now, Curious is a great card, but um, 
it's kind of hard to make in light swords. You, you kind of need those additional summons to your side of the field. I think providing the strategy an additional normal summon and not giving us another gimmick like Twilight Swords would be really good for the light sworn strategy. We have seen this deck be successful, and Judgment Dragon aside, the, the artwork's cool, the cards are cool, the effects are boss, this deck's just good. Hi, yes, if you guys are a Calvin Talhan disciple, pretty sure I didn't say his name right, then you are in the right spot because ABC is a bad deck with tons and tons and tons of potential. We are in Master Rule 4. The same arrow that sends ABC monsters to the graveyard and gains their effects. So you basically get a double whammy. You get pluses for playing Yu-Gi-Oh! with the ABC strategy. A Assault Core, Recursion Union Monsters, B Buster, Drake, gets you Surges, and C Crush Wipers, Special Summon some to your side of the field. They are not hard ones per turn, and they can interact with each other. ABC is just too strong, ladies and gentlemen. The biggest problem with ABC is that Ancient Fairy Dragon is banned. Dragon Ravine is not powerful without Ancient Fairy Dragon. Getting into your Union Hanger is a struggle, and even when you're not struggling, it's easy to disrupt. And then also the dreaded normal summon problem. Now, I think there needs to be an ABC and a D monster, as in D dust yourself off after I scrape you with this ABC deck. And this card would allow you to gain an additional normal summon of an ABC or Union monster to your side of the field. Easy fix, right? We ain't gotta do nothing else. What if I told you though that ABC is actually still competitive right here, right now? And I know you guys are thinking, Cali Effect, no way. Did you really come with ABC Spice? And I'm just like normal Californians. Dude, yeah I did. Of course I came with ABC Spice. Just make sure you destroy that like button one more time. Don't do it twice, just do it once. I need, the, I need it to be blue, okay? Rest in peace, Nipsey. And also, be sure to let us know down below in the comment section how much you want to see this ABC deck profile. I think that ABCs are very fun to play even right now. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of The Cal Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon. We have so many awesome rewards. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.